Canadian captains for Castle number five, Jack Crew, number nine, James Howhani, number 44, Don St. Tom, number 52, Micah Carell. For Kahuku, number three, Keola Wilson, number 20, Jason Kiel, number 66, Star Falazai, number 79, Jose Matsuri. Officials work in this game, the referee, Mal Quartero, the head linesman, Arnold Coepo, the umpire, Dave Maelua, field judge, Jerry Daniel, back judge, Pete Omelion. Timing of the game, Jerry Hermasura, the boxman, Ray Passion, Ching, Sam Iokea, and Peter Collins. Castle won the toss, referred their action to the second half. Kahuku will be receiving. Castle will be kicking off, defending the north end zone. everybody and welcome to the Aloha Stadium. My name is Blaine Cowie along with Bill Lewis. Thanks for joining us for this game between the Kahuku Red Raiders and the Castle Knights. Yeah, traditionally you see here on uh, your screen the traditional handshake before the game. This is an OIA tradition. The ILH still on extra shake hands after the game and Blaine I tell you uh, they just had the coin toss and Castle elected to defer until the second half which means they're gonna have to kick off to Kahuku. Uh, that surprises me. Kahuku, especially with the number one offense in the Red Division. But then on the other side of the coin, they also have the number one defense in the Red Division for the OIA. Uh, again, I'm just, I'm just amazed. I mean, the Castle coaches must have watched film, watched tape. They certainly read the papers. Uh, Castle three and three, excuse me, they're four and two uh, after that uh, forfeiture from Radford. Uh, their record... Uh, uh, would have been three and three, but because of the ineligible player by Radford, uh, they're bumped up to four and two and uh, representing their conference against Kahuku here tonight. And uh, uh, quite frankly, I'm surprised that that they're, they're not going to take every opportunity they can to get the ball, and uh, they're elected to go on defense. So we'll see if it pays off. The Kahuku Red Raiders 5-0-1 oh, on the season, led by head coach Doug Simones. As you see the Kahuku team down there on the field. And they have quite a potent team. Watch Isaac Aolono and Ken Faavai, two of their star running backs. Faavai averaging 14.3 yards a carry. Yeah, you know, that you think he's a receiver when you see stats like that. But as a running back, that has got to scare opposing defenses. 14.3 yards a carry. I, I don't know that I've ever seen that before. Chris Malafala last year uh, for the St. Louis Crusaders, uh, who won the Prep Bowl, averaged a little over eight yards a carry. And, and he was a premier running back uh, in the ILH uh, after uh, Jason Keel, who is also with Kahuku. He'll be playing tonight, uh, who's back from a broken collarbone earlier in the season. And uh, he will get some action tonight. How much action yet to remains to be seen And as they line up here for the uh, kickoff. Castle Knights will be kicking the ball off. Kicking off for the Castle Knights will be Kiha Schultz. Back to receive for Kahuku. They have three men back there. Termaine Anderson, Keola Wilkins, and I believe Isaac Aolona. So we'll see which one of the three picks it up. Now this would be a good opportunity to see Jason back there. Again, giving him some more playing time as he's only been back a week. But I guess they're going to like to use him on offense and not uh, use him on special teams. But we'll see what happens here on the punt team when they get an opportunity to return punts. 
And so we are just about ready to get this football game underway to start off the OIA postseason playoff single elim elimination tournament. So you lose, you go back to school. Head referee for this game will be Mel Cortero as he gets this game underway with the little whistle. And we got a nice booming kick going to be fielded by Anderson at about the 16-yard line. This will be coming back. Castle uh, was offsides on the kickoff. A little bit of five-yard penalty against Castle. They'll kick it. They'll kick it back from their own 35-yard line as they get ready to lace this thing up again. And, and you, see, you see a little Hawaiian, Hawaiian uh, officiating as as uh, the, the head tilt towards the offending uh, offensive team there from the uh, head head official. Five yard offside penalty, which will back the ball up five yards, and so Castle will have to kick the ball off from their own 35. And so the Knights kind of stumble out of the blocks a little bit here, maybe a few jitters to open up this game. This is their first time playing at the Aloha Stadium this season. Yeah, and I look for Kahuku to go straight at him uh, with a lot of power, maybe some misdirection, try to use some of that aggressiveness against him. Once again, Kiha Schultz will kick this ball off. Anderson has this on about the 18 as he loops around. Anderson looking for some room, and he is going to be wrapped up at about the 22-yard line by the Castle Knights special teams, making the play for the Knights, Jeff Cruz, among others. Jeff Cruz, uh, look at the size of this guy. This guy is 5'5". 170 pound. Uh, that's a linebacker for you, 5'5". Five, five. He looks more like a defensive back. He's real compact, but uh, talking to the coaches before the game, real solid individual. And Kolo Funaki will lead the troops out for Kahuku here on first down and 10. To give the quick handoff, I believe that will be one of the running backs. That was Ken Fa'avai, the 5'10", 190 pound senior. He is the second leading rusher in the OIA right now. 42 rushes for 601 yards and seven touchdowns on the season. Now he's your hurry up offense here, so we'll get a chance to talk about it later. On second down, to give it to Anderson on the little misdirection. And Anderson is wrapped up in the backfield by the Castle Knights on the play, Micah Carrera, and he read that play perfectly. Yeah, again, I, I talked before the kickoff about what they were trying to do with Castle's aggressiveness, trying to use it against them. Here they try a little misdirection, uh, end around, and what happens is you get an opportunity to see the replay here. It's, it's just an end around here, and you know, Michael was not surprised at all. He did his job, stayed in his lane, and uh, sacked him for a six yard loss. And that will bring up a third down and 16 for Kahuku. Once again, they fake the handoff up the middle, and Funaki is hit just as he comes around. Once again, the Castle Nice defense coming up big on the play. Kamalani Kakayo. Yeah, number 54. He wears number 54. And uh, I'll tell you what, he just flat out grabbed the hold of him. We're going to get an opportunity to replay here. And he wanted a pitch. He stayed in his lane. His responsibility is the quarterback. He was in a cat and mouse situation there. We'll, do, we'll talk about that a little more in the game. And Kahuka will have to punt on fourth down. Back to punt for the Raiders. Red Raiders, Victor Hayola. And it will be fair caught at about the 47-yard line, making the play for the Castle Knights, Shane Kauhani. And once again, Kahuku is amazingly stopped here. Again, it's, it's almost as if Castle had a, uh, a pregame plan drawn up and uh, so far has been uh, uh, following the script. Uh, you, if somebody would have told me before the game they'd hold them to a minus six yards on their first series and have the ball on their own 47-yard uh, line to start the game, I'd, I'd be a little surprised. But We'll see what Castle can do. Four and two record. Kaleo Han, the 5'11", 165-pound junior, will lead the Castle team on first down. We have movement and flags on the play. We'll see what the call is. That'll be offsides on Kahuku, number 24 for the Kahuku Red Raiders uh, going into this shift. And this is something Castle's going to have to do. You're going to see some special plays from their offense, a little razzle-dazzle, something like the end around that Kahuku did. Uh, they're going to have to do that to stay in this game. Uh, we get an opportunity to see here. They just shift in it, and there's the offsides. Three receivers out to the far side for Castle on first down. That's Han in the shotgun. Han has it complete to a receiver. That's going to be Shane Kauhani getting about four or five yards on the play. It appears he has a first down. Uh, real quick, uh, real quick pass pattern here. Just a slant in. Uh, something that uh, Castle is going to have to do uh, efficiently tonight because they're going to get some pressure from that front four of Kukas. We get an opportunity to see it on the replay here again. Again, it's just a one-step drop, slammed in by the receiver, 
uh, makes the catch, picks up six yards, pick the first down. The first and 10 ball on the Kahuku 36 yard line for Castle. Hahn once again looking to pass. Hahn in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. Pass was headed for Thomas Foster and he was hit immediately as soon as the ball got there. Good play by the Kahuku defense. Yeah, again, uh, a good pass, it's a completion is what happens here. He's got a, he's a, he's a right-handed quarterback rolling to his left. You get an opportunity courtesy of News 8 on the replay. See, he's rolling out to his right. He's got a, he's got a pass back and the, the pass is a little bit behind him. And actually, he could have just stayed in the pocket. He rolled out too much. He had plenty of time. He should have stayed in there. The ball should have been completed. Khalil Han, the starting quarterback. 30 completions on 82 attempts for 373 yards this year. He has thrown three touchdown receptions, but also eight INTs, so he's got to be careful of that here against Kahuku as he is up on second down and 10. Once again, they have a little pass out complete to the flats to Sean Kalelo Pano. This is just a little hitch pattern, two steps forward, and he's going to come back for the ball, catch it, and try to make something happen. Uh, Unfortunately, he was double covered out there. The linebacker came out to the flats. Courtesy of GTE Hawaiian Tail, you see, it's just a little hitch pattern. Two steps, comes back with it. Here's the outside linebacker and the cornerback converging on the tackle. He picks up some short yardage, and they're going to have to do more than that. They're going to throw the ball downfield. Six yards to go on third down. They have it on the Kuku 32 yard line with nine minutes and four seconds remaining. And once again, we'll have some movement along the lines. This is going to be all sides again by number 24 on uh, Kuhuko. And that's the second one this series that he's picked up. Uh, again, uh, Castle doing a good job changing up the cadence, uh, drawing them all sides. It's going to be uh, third down and short yardage uh, for uh, Roosevelt. Be interesting to see what to do. This is two plays here. They're, they're not going to punt or kick a field goal in this situation. They're going to go for the first down, third down, and fourth down. That five yard penalty really did change things. That is now third and short. They have it on the Kahuku 27-yard line. Han will pass. Han going deep, and it's going to be almost picked off in and out of the hands of Jeremy Gonzalez as he was capped out underneath that pass, and the pass just kind of floated up there and just really hung up for a while. Floated? Looked like it had helium in it. I mean, you want to talk about air under the ball? This thing was a balloon. Should have come down with the interception. He didn't. Castle is fortunate and very lucky at this point here. They're coming in with their short yardage, probably their goal line situation. Uh, oh, they're gonna they're gonna kick the field goal. Yeah, they're punting, they're kicking. And so Castle will go for the 37-yard field goal. Kicking the ball for Castle will be Kiha Schultz. And the left footer kicker has this one up, and it will be good as he squeaks it over the field goal pole, the bottom of the goal post. And so quickly, Castle Knights open up to a 3 0 lead over the Kahuka Red Raiders. I'll tell you, I'm sitting up here looking at this ball, and I'll tell you what, another coat of paint, that ball's, that ball's no good. He just did get it over the goal post. As you see, the Castle fans are elated looking at the Castle goals like, yeah, that's right, just the way I drew it up. Incredible. Uh, make sure, make sure. Let's go back to that third down. Let's go back to that third down play where it was uh, third and short. Here's a all sport uh, replay. The kick here, nice placement, good blocking. So you get the balls right down the center of the pike, right across the goal post, three points. And again, I, I started to touch on the uh, that third down play. As you get an opportunity to see Castle, uh, the kickoff team, getting ready to do uh, what probably Kahuku didn't expect them, kicking the ball off again here in the first quarter. And, the third down, I guess they tried to catch Kahuku uh, sleeping. Uh, they're in the shotgun formation. They try for the deep touchdown pass. Uh, they don't get the interception. Uh, in baseball, it would be an error because they scored afterwards. So 3 nothing, and but three points is not going to win this game, Blaine. Unfortunately for the Kahuku Red Raiders, they don't really count unearned scores, I guess, as you can say for um, baseball. It's still 3 nothing on top of the scoreboard. Castle over Kahuka with eight and a half minutes remaining here in the first quarter. There you see Isaac Aolona. He's back to receive along with Termaine Anderson and Keola Wilkins for Kahuku. Well, what this does, what this does for, for, for Castle really pumps them up. I mean, they were excited to, to, to be here tonight anyway. Just come out first, hold Kahuku, and uh, this has really got to do a lot for the team. Kiha Schultz will boot it away one more time. And this one will bounce. It will be touched by Anderson. But eventually fielded, that will be Keola Wilkins, and he gets out to about the 36, 38-yard line. We'll see where they spot it. Yeah, Khalid Craig uh, came over and just pushed him out of bounds. 
Uh, he was tight roping the sidelines over there and had no place to run, really. And everybody stayed in their lanes. Good job by Castle Special Teams. Courtesy all sport here again. Again, the Cardinal rule on kickoffs, never let the ball hit the turf. They did there, mishandled it there. The right guy ended up with the ball. Unfortunately, no place to go. Just pushed out of bounds. Good play by Jared Choi for the Knights as Kahuga has it first and 10 on their own 27-yard line. That's going to be a quick handoff, and he's got some room. That will be Isaac Aalona, and Aalona breaks out to about the 45-yard line before being brought down by the Castle defense, Bronson. led by Bronson Tom. Correct, correct. Bronson Tom over there uh, coming up to make the save there. And, you know, it looked like he wasn't expending a whole lot of uh, quickness and energy on that play, but uh, as you see, he picked up... Uh, Half a half a Oahu on the, on the run here, missed tackle right here, and good block outside by by the Kahuku number uh, two, Tremaine Anderson, and uh, first down, first down by Kahuku. A little uh, equipment change here. Uh, Castle's trying to fix uh, some equipment. They'll go back into the hole. But uh, nice little start. They picked up more yardage on that one play than they did in uh, four plays in the first series. Gain of 18 yards on that rush. That will bring a first and 10. Ball on their own 45 yard line. As you see, the, as you see some of the fans dancing in the stands here. Oh, by the way, you guys do have school tomorrow. It's a Thursday. <laughs> Just a little under eight minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Castle on top, 3 nothing over Kahuku. That's going to be a quick handoff once again. Carrying the ball is Jason Kao. And Kao looking for some room along the sidelines before finally being brought down. Out of bounds by Nicholas Mayakawa. And look more like Kao tackled Mayakawa that, on that play as Mayakawa was just holding on for his life. Yeah, that uh, well, he showed some power on this play, didn't he? All right, we're going to get a chance to see the replay, courtesy of the Diet Pepsi. And you see, just gets it here. Nice block on the side. Missed tackle here by uh, Castle. Two missed tackles here. Little stiff arm action, three. And he's finally uh, pushed out of bounds. Uh, you can't give up this much yardage and expect to stay in the game. I don't care if you're up 30 to nothing. Once again, it'll be first down for Kahuku. They have it on Castle's 36. As they give it to Isaac Alona up the middle, gain of about three yards. Well, that's just an honesty play for uh, Kahuku. They're, they're coming off tackle and they're opening up uh, a, a, a hole big enough you could drive a moving van through. And that's just to keep the defense a little tighter so that when they do go off tackle, uh, they'll have the defense uh, tight. They'll uh, have to rely on the defensive secondary to come up to help make those tackles. And they're not going to tackle these Kahuku backs one-on-one. -on -one. Second down and six, ball on the 32-yard line. Kahuku mounting a drive here. As once again, they play, give a little play action. Funaki looking for a man. He has Keola Wilkins open and touchdown Kahuku. What a play action on that one as it seemed like the field just kind of stopped and it was just Funaki and the receiver Wilkins actually playing the ball as everybody else just kind of got frozen by the play action. Uh, they just played catch out there with this play. You run, you run, you run, you run. The whole scouting report on Kahuku is they're going to throw the ball maybe, maybe 14 times a game if that and here they do, they just run down, run down, run down, a little play action and you know, he, 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 had, the, he had the defensive secondary beat and nice lead, nice catch, nice pass. It's 6-3. Hayolo for the extra point. He boots it up, and it will be good from the hold of Keola Wilkins. And so the Kahuka Raider, Red Raiders come storming back here with seven minutes remaining in the first quarter against the Castle Knights. It is seven to three. Yeah, they made it look pretty easy, and this is the Kahuku that uh, everybody's used to seeing. And uh, quite frankly, I'm a little surprised that they uh, kicked the extra point, especially with all the... Uh, all the ruckus in the newspapers the last couple of weeks about them not having a kicker and they wanted to practice the two-point conversions. Uh, that, uh, they see Coach Doug Simons there, I guess he found a kicker and I guess everybody's not, uh, not through talking about that uh, Lei Luhua 76-6 thumping that Kahuku gave them. Uh, again, they ran for every two-point conversion or pass for it because they said they didn't have a kicker. I guess they found one. Apparently so, and that they caused quite a ruckus in the newspapers, especially after the game that following Monday. There were quite a few comments in the newspapers from the various people involved from the Leilehua side. Yeah, well, the uh, athletic director for Leilehua thought that, uh, that they had run the score up, and uh, Doug Simons tried to uh, alibi, and as you see him here, and uh, he, he does have a penchant for running up the score. There you see Simons walking along the sidelines as Kahuku prepares to kick the ball off. Victor Hayola will boot it away back to Castle. 
Receiving for the Castle Knights will be number 82, I believe, Kawe Umiyamaka. Just to mention here before the kickoff, these two teams met last, I believe it was in 1989. Uh, the final in uh, that game was 10 to three. Kuhuku won, so it's seven to three now, so maybe uh, we're gonna have a, a replay of that game. I don't think so. Iola boosts this one away, gets a nice kick. It will be picked up by one of the upbacks, that is Shane Kauhani. And Kauhani fumbles the football. Red Raiders all over the place as, the, as they pick it up at the five yard line. Big special teams play here for the Kahuku Red Raiders as they pick up the loose ball fumble. You know, good teams find a way to win. That's why they're good, right? Not so good teams find ways to lose. That's the turnovers. Uh, Castle doesn't hurt them or help themselves by turning the ball over deep in their own territory. Just a good pop here again. Cardinal Sim by the by the returning back. He stops. You never stop. That's one of the first things you teach a back. Never stop on a punt or a kickoff. He stopped. He got the ball, knocked it out of him. Ball's on the five-yard line for Kahuko. They just scored. Uh, talk about letting the air out of the balloon real quick. It's only the first quarter. This could be a big momentum turn of this football game with six and a half minutes remaining. Kahuku has the ball on Castle's five yard line, first down. They give it to Aalona. Aalona looking to get in, he gets about two yards and he will be about two yards outside of the end zone, bring up second down and two. Yeah, Mike Brighter came up, but it was the turf that made that tackle there. He just slipped and fell down and fortunately for uh, him, this is not the NFL, he can't get back up again. He'll be uh, stopped short, you see the replay here. And this is just a student body right as they pull both guards coming out here. They get a nice seal block on number 24 here, and he just falls down. Second down and goal to go. Kahuku looking to score it in lar increase their 73 lead over the Castle Knights. Funaki will give this one to Jason Kao, and Kao works his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Jason Kale scoring a touchdown here for Kahuku, giving them a 13-3 lead over the Castle Knights. Uh, Jason looks real good having sat out for most of the season, but uh, again, what, what's happening with Castle here is they're moving their defensive alignment around to uh, compensate the offense for Kahuku, and, and they're getting caught. They're not being set. Consequently, they're getting pushed off the ball, and they're going to have to make an adjustment here. Uh, real early because if they're going to keep shifting like that, they're they're not going to be in a position uh, when the ball is snapped and they're going to get pushed off the ball with this. I mean, look at the front four of Kahuku or the front five of Kahuku, their offensive uh, front here. They're, they're averaging close to 300 pounds. We get an opportunity on the sprint replay here. Is, see the snap going. Here, here comes Kale right here. You know, he's 5'10, 200 pounds, so he's not a lightweight. This guy can flat out pick him up and put him down. One man to watch on the line for the Kuhuku Raiders is Star Falivai, a 6'4", 310-pound senior. Boy, that guy is big. Big. This guy is so big. I mean, when he sits down, he takes two chairs. This, this is an opportunity for us to mention here as we see the uh, stadium stars. Uh, you can get a tape of this game. Just send in $20, and uh, we'll send you the tape of the game that you're watching. Five minutes, 37 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Scores 13 to three, Kahuku on top of Castle as they set up for the extra point. Keola Wilkins will hold the ball. Uh, to Victor Hyola. Hyola loses the ball. It appeared they were trying to go fake there. As you see, as you see it back here, we'll, we'll see it again on the replay, but it appeared it was kind of a busted play. Like they, they just really didn't have a handle of the football. No, and, and you're right, uh, Blaine. It, it was a busted play, and the, the on a timeout, you really, you really don't expect something like this to happen. But even with the best teams, it does. And Kuku up 13 to three. Again, Castle's not out of the game by no means. Is uh, they're over there trying to get everybody on the same page here on the on the kickoff, probably telling uh, their receiver, their defensive, uh, their receivers. Don't stop when you catch the ball. We're going to get an opportunity to see the replay here. Here comes a snap. It's a little high, mishandled. Uh, again, two guys trying to get control of the ball. That, that shouldn't happen. And in practice, you work on things like that. Uh, obviously, they don't work on it enough. And so after the, the fumbled 
extra point attempt, I guess you can call it. It's 13 to three, Kahuka Red Raiders on top after the Castle turnover. And once again, Castle will have the ball back. Once again, back to receive for the Castle Knights will be Solomon Lee. You know, with 5.37 to go here, they, 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 they scored uh, twice in less than a minute. And uh, Kahuku has been known to put up a lot of points. Uh, you don't want to give them uh, very many opportunities. Uh, that's one Castle would like to have back. Victor Hayola will boot this one away. And Lee will have it back at his own 13-yard line. Lee holding on to the football, working his way up to the 29-yard line. Good return here by Castle. Uh, he's just trying to find some place to uh, run the ball through a hole. He couldn't find one, so he just sidestepping and uh, again, held on to the ball pretty tight as he get an opportunity to see uh, Kuhuku and uh, Castle right now. And Ball's on the uh, 29 yard line. A light miss begins to fall here at the Loja Stadium as the Castle Knights look to close the gap just a little bit as they're down by 10 points, 13 to three. They have it on their own 29 yard line, first down and 10. Quick timing pattern and the receiver wasn't looking as the quarterback Kaleo Han just fired that one. Intended receiver is Chris Pagoyo. Well, that's going to go in the books as an incomplete pass, but uh, there are those who are watching the game right now who says that was a self-defense pass. He got rid of that, and he got rid of it in a hurry because he was being bore down on the, by the defensive uh, end of Kahuku, and he just saw him coming. He had no, no choice but to get rid of it early. Kaleo Han once again lining up in the shotgun formation with three receivers out to the far side. Once again, Han looking, has a man complete, and he is wrapped up immediately. David Benito receiving the ball for Castle, but he got hit. Yeah, that's going to be marked probably right at the line of scrimmage for about no gain, maybe even a loss. As, uh, yeah, he, he, he did lose the ball. And, you know, the quarterback in a situation like that has got to be able to see the defensive back, and, and, and that ball should have just been uh, thrown out of bounds or over his head because uh, he's been better off uh, throwing that ball away. Credit Eric Tevaga with that crushing hit for the Kahuka Red Raiders. That will bring up a third down and 11 for Castle. Once again, they have it on their own 28-yard line with just four and a half minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Penalty markers down on the play before it gets underway. We'll see what the call is. This will probably go against uh, Kahuka uh, in, the, in the neutral zone. Yeah, correct, it's going to go against Kahuka and they lined up. And no part of your body, helmet, or equipment can uh, protrude over the ball, and that's what happened. This helps Castle out a little bit, and they're throwing the ball a little bit more than uh, we suspected. Is uh, They're pretty evenly balanced in their conference, uh, passing and throwing about uh, 600 yards apiece through the season. So uh, a little surprised they're throwing the ball as often as they are. Third and six on the 33-yard line. Once again, Han looking over the middle, has a man complete, first down and more. Making the reception is Chris Pagoyo. Uh, this is this is sweet. He just found him in the seam. And again, Kahuku, you know, they don't throw a whole lot. We're going to get an opportunity to see this again. He's got plenty of protection. Only a four-man rush by Kahuku. Not a real exceptional pass, but he gets there. He catches it, turns it upfield, and uh, picks up a first down. Pagoyo, big kid, 6'2", 200 pound junior. He'll be back next year. As Kaleo Han lines up first down and 10, they are in Kahuku territory. They have it on the 47 yard line. Han once again looking for Pagoyo, just off his fingertips, just a little bit too far in front of Pagoyo, bring up second and 10. I like the game plan for Castle. They know they're gonna get some blitzes. Uh, they've altered their uh, regular season uh, offensive scheme to to throw the ball every down just about here but everything's going to be quick passes quick patterns two-step drop three-step drop slant in patterns maybe quick outs hitches and and i think that's going to be effective against kahuku it's going to keep them in the game however it, it doesn't take a whole lot of time off the clock three minutes 25 seconds remaining once again han is going to pass Han looking on the sidelines, has a man complete and out of bounds is Thomas Foster. He steps out, but not before he picks up the first down. Uh, 
Kuhuko's going to have to try to find a way as we're going to have an opportunity to see the replay here. Again, he rolls out to his left and throws across his body, which is a very difficult pass uh, to complete. He catches it. Again, safe pattern. It's thrown to the outside shoulder of the receiver, and either he catches it or it's out of bounds. It's, uh, it's a safe pattern, but Kuhuko's going to have to find a way to put some pressure on the quarterback, and they just haven't been able to do it. Gain of 13 yards on that last play, bring up first and 10. Han once again looking for Pagoyo over the middle and once again just off his fingertips. Yeah, they're, they're going to keep throwing this until Kahuku finds a way to stop it. It's a safe pattern. Uh, they, they can't get hurt on it too much unless the, the, the defensive back wants to gamble. You gamble on a pass pattern like this, you either get the interception, you knock it down. Here's the replay here, he stops. This is about a six step drop, turns, slanted pattern again, just leads him a little too high and, and he's going to pay for the price coming across the middle like that. This is, this is not Michael Irvin running the ball. Second and 10, ball on Kuhuku's 34-yard line. Han rolling, rolling, looking for somebody. He is not going to find anybody on this one as he is wrapped up back around the 45, 47-yard line, leading the charge for Kuhuku, Nolan Alo. Yeah, Nolan did a real good job staying in his lane. He was coming from the outside. His job is to contain. Uh, unfortunately for the quarterback, his job is to stay in the pocket. Now, it is a rollout uh, pass, but uh, you get an opportunity to see the replay here as he rolls he's going to roll out or i guess they uh here it is right here he rolls out but again he needs to stay in his lane and in the pocket he doesn't do it and he rolls right into the defensive coverage and you know this isn't just castle that does this most high school quarterbacks at the prep level will make this mistake loss of about 11 yards on this i bring up third and 20 just two minutes remaining here castle trailing by 10 to the Cougar Raiders, 13 to three. Han once again under pressure, he's gonna run and he gains about three or four yards. And that is definitely far from the first down as they will bring up fourth and 16. And we'll see if the punting unit comes on here. Yeah, he got tripped up uh, about the line of scrimmage by Jacob Hyola, uh, a six foot 230 pound defensive lineman. And he was already on the ground and uh, he tried to scamper through for a first down and he just got tripped up and they're gonna punt. Shane Kauhani back to punt for Castle. Back to receive will be Keola Wilkins. Along with, I believe, that is number six, Jeremy Gonzalez, as he fair catches it back at the 20-yard line, giving the Kahuku Red Raiders possession of the ball back with one minute, 22 seconds remaining. Kahuku on top, 13-3 to over the Castle Knights. You know, very effective drive by Castle. They, they, they stayed in the game plan. They didn't panic, save for the one mistake that... Uh, the quarterback made by rolling into the defensive coverage there. You gotta like what they did is uh, the rain's the rain's coming down a little bit, but it shouldn't be hampering a whole lot. That's gonna be a quick handoff to Ken Fa'avai. Fa'avai working his way for room as he really hustles out for about 13 yards in that game. Ken Fa'avai doing a tremendous job of using his blockers to get around the defense. Kind of reminded me of one of the, uh, the, the, the the experiments that a scientist would use as you get an opportunity to see the replay here. Just like a rat running through a maze here. He's just finding his blockers, uh, just sidestepping. Does a real good job here and uh, Castle just can't find a handle and he finally gets uh, tackled after a uh, first down. First and 10 for Kolo Funaki and the Red Raiders. They have it on their own 32-yard line with just under a minute to go here in the first quarter. That's going to be a handoff to Aalona. Aalona breaking free, and he is tripped up at about the 48-yard line. And if he wasn't tripped up there, he had a lot of green going down to the end zone. He had about 45 yards in front of him, four, four six points. And good job by Kahuka right here. This was not the design play that, that came in from uh, Doug Simone. So he checked it off at the beginning of the, uh, after he made the read on the defense, he checked off and, and checked off to this and uh, two first downs in a row. Touchdown saving tackle by Chris Valdez at his first and 10 for Kahuku. Whistles before the play gets started. As we have a minor equipment problem here. Now they got that all cleared up. 26 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Kahuko on top, 13 to three. Funaki will pass on this down. Funaki looking deep, has a man. It is in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Marvin Cravens. But there was also some pretty good coverage there provided by the Castle Knights defense. Yeah, Castle back there. And, uh, he's gonna come out of the game right now. Coach wants to talk to him a little bit. He. Uh, he really gave up too much cushion. He was beat on the play. He did the only thing he could do, and that is jump up, try to knock it down, and just that effort uh, distorted uh, 
the reception and uh, came up incomplete, but then had six points all over it. He was beat. Kolofunaki showing that he does have an arm and that the running game is not the only game for the Kuhuku Red Raiders as he really fired that one out there. Second down and 10. Once again, we'll have whistles before the play is started. I think we're going to have too many men on the field for Castle. I don't know why. This is going to be interesting. Head referee Mel Cortero is discussing with the rest of his officiating crew, and we'll get the call for you in just a few seconds here. No flag. See, the defense, I, I, I believe what it is, is the, the defensive man they didn't have enough players on the field. He came on the field. Are you allowed to do that? Offense, you have to check into the, to the huddle before you can uh, run a play. Second down and 10, Funaki keeps it on the option as he works his way out to about the 49-yard line of Castle. Gain of about three yards, bring up sec third and seven as we have reached the end of the first quarter. Kuku Red Raiders on top, 13-3 to over the Castle Knights. Castle Knights showing that they can move the ball, just have not been able to punch it in. One key turnover in the first quarter really hurt the Castle Knights as they switch sides of the field. And that turnover is the is really the difference in the game right now uh seven to three uh without it but again castle stayed in their game and they're, they're, they're not gonna they're not gonna change anything give me a y y give me an e e give me an s come on give me an s what do you get yes And we are back here at the Aloha Stadium for the beginning of the second quarter. Score is 13-3. Kahuku Red Raiders on top of the Castle Knights. It'll be Kahuku's football, third down. Well, the, the, the good news is that it's only 13-3. to, to three. The bad news is Kahuku's running at will, and they've got all day in the world to throw the ball. That's That's got to be a concern for, for Castle because not only are they running the ball effectively, except for the two series, the one the first series at the beginning of the first quarter, and, and this series here where it's uh, third and, third and uh, about eight. But uh, they got to be concerned that they can throw the ball anytime they want. Isaac Alona really, really had an impressive first quarter. We'll see what he does here in the second as we'll get it underway. That's going to be a quick handoff. Uh, Alona running, spinning his way. He will be close to first down yardage. We'll see what, where they mark it. Yeah, they're going to give him the first down. He got tackled for the first down. Uh, it was an angle tackle. If he hits him straight on, we get an opportunity to see it again. Uh, the end of the play. Here it is. He's just following number 50 and number 67, or 87 up the, the middle there. And you see he gets tackled from behind and pushed forward for the first down. First and 10 ball on the 41 yard line of Castle as Kahuku has the ball and they are driving once again. They're set up in the I formation. Funaki, quick pass. It was tipped and picked off by Jeff Cruz. Cruz looking for some room along the sidelines. And he is finally tripped up by the quarterback, Kolo Funaki, along with some help from the intended receiver, Marvin Cravens. But big key turnover once again in this game, and that evens it out at one apiece as Jeff Cruz comes down with the interception and the return of about 30 or 40 yards. Uh, you know, this is the kind of play that you need. Is you see the rain starts coming down the more. You see the, see the replay here. He drops back. This ball's going to get tipped right there by number 52 for Castle. And come up with the catch here. And, I, and I'll tell you what, number 12 had a beat on him. A nice uh, stop back block by number 9 right here as he, he gets a piece of him that enables him to run upfield for another 15, 20 yards. Uh, we're going to get a timeout here. And big play I noticed on the... Uh, on that interception there, the front, the front four for Kahuku, that's a real quick, quick pass. It's just a slanting pattern, pretty much what Castle's been doing against Kahuku. So what the offensive linemen do is they block down at the feet of the defensive lineman. Again, it knocks down the front, gives the quarterback a better view to, to hit that slanting pattern. Unfortunately, the linebacker was coming, gets a piece of it, uh, heads up play by, by Castle and take it down. And, 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 you know, this makes football exciting with... Uh, Second quarter just underway, and I guess they're trying to figure out what they're going to do right here. 
Credit one of the Castle team captains, Micah Carrero, with the tip of the pass. He's a 5'11", 180-pound senior linebacker, and he really wants it tonight as he comes with the big tip and the interception once again by Jeff Cruz, the 5'5", 170-pound senior. So the upperclassmen really coming up big for the Castle Knights here, giving them an opportunity to really close the gap as they trail by 10 points, 13-3 against the Kahuka Red Raiders with just 11 minutes, 8 seconds remaining here in the first half. They come out with a trips left formation here. Single setback for Castle is Shane Kaolelo Pono. As Kaleo Han sets up in the shotgun formation. Rain still coming down here at the Aloha Stadium. It appears they're going to get a towel to wipe the ball down as it's getting quite slick out there. Are they going to change balls here because the, the ball was out there a while. And, and this is going to hurt Castle because you know, they want to throw the ball tonight. And with this rain here, it's going to hurt them a little bit. Kahuko, they're, they're going to run the ball. Rain doesn't really matter that much when you're running it. And so first and 10 ball on Kahuku's 33-yard line. Castle with a golden opportunity here as they give the draw play to Kalelo Pono, and he is stopped in the backfield, loss of maybe two yards on the play. Again, this, this is not designed for anything other than to keep Kahuku honest and, and, and slow down the pass rush a little bit, although he does have time to pass the ball with the quick patterns, but he's not going to have time for a five-step drop or a seven-step drop uh, to hit anybody deep. And, Kuku will make the adjustments, start shutting down the, the, the quick patterns, but Castle's going to have to just keep running the ball like this once in a while just to keep the defensive front honest. Second and 13, ball on the Kuku 36-yard line for Castle. Khalil Han looking deep along the sidelines. Incomplete on coverage for Kuku. Keola Wilkins, but we have penalty markers down on the play. Yeah, we got the a preliminary indication here is... Uh, might be uh, against Kahuku holding, but uh, we'll wait and get the indication here as the referee is talking it over with the uh, umpire. Mel Cortero with the call. Illegal receiver downfield against Castle, and uh, Kahuku will take this penalty. Good opportunity to see the replay here. Maybe we'll be able to pick it up. Now we're going to get the tail end of it. Thank you, guys. As uh, you see the ball in the air and uh, no chance to catch it as it's out of bounds and double coverage back there. And Kuhuku declines. Uh, somewhat surprised by that call, but I guess I believe Castle will probably throw the ball again here and uh, try to pick up at least half the yardage uh, and try for another field goal if they can. So Kahuku will take the result of that last play, bring up third and 13. Once again, the ball is on Kahuku's 36-yard line. Castle looking to make something happen here on third down. They're going to hand it off. Carrying the ball for Castle was Thomas Foster, and he has stopped maybe gain of one yard, if, you, if uh, no gain at all. This is a surprise. They're throwing the ball the whole game. The last time they ran the ball, they got nothing. You see the replay here. And again, this is a this is a counter, and they pull their guard. This is a very slow developing play. Uh, the, Kuhuku is not that quick defensively, so you, you need this against aggressive defense. And Shane Kahane to punt it away. Back is Keolo Wilkins. Wilkins will let this one bounce. It takes a nice castle bounce, and it will go out of bounds at about the two yard line. And so Castle is at least able to back Kuhuku up way deep in their own territory as they'll have it back on their own two-yard line. Yeah, let's go back to that third third down play there where, where they're going to run a counter. Uh, you know, they're throwing the ball pretty effective. They're hitting the uh, slants and the quick patterns, and uh, they're in close enough where they could even get the field goal or even go for it on fourth down. So that play selection there, I'm, I'm, I'm a little surprised at. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll question that call. You see the Castle cheerleaders, they're excited to be here at the Loja Stadium. First time Castle's high, Castle High School's football team been here all season, so first time for the cheerleaders too as they cheer their football team on. Football team trailing by 10 points, but that never dampens the spirits of the pep squad. That's one thing you'll always notice at football games. There's, there's, there's probably two young ladies right there who probably want a copy of this tape, and they can get a copy of this tape by calling the Aloha Stadium. And so once again, it's scored 13 to three. Kahuku Red Raiders on top of the Castle Knights. We'll be back along with the rest of the cheerleaders and the fans here at the Aloha Stadium.
And welcome back to the Aloha Stadium, Kahuku football, first down and 10 on their own two-yard line. And they got a man breaking free, carrying the ball is Isaac Aalona. Aalona looking for Roman, he is tripped up at the 40-yard line. And Isaac Aalona is having one heck of a first quarter here for the Kahuku Red Raiders as he really exploded for a gain of about 38 or 40 yards on that rush. Yeah, speaking of the 40 yards, he got tripped up by the 40-yard line as... Uh, he just lost his balance. We get our next opportunity to see the replay here. All the way down on their, uh, pinned in their own end zone uh, on the three-yard line. There's a missed tackle right there. And you know, you got to make that stop there because the secondary is coming up to help out, and he busted out to the outside. And you're going to see him, uh, you'll see number 40, the 40-yard like right here. He's going to trip up right there, and uh, he just fell down. Hand off to Jason Kao on, sec on first and 10, ball on the 43-yard line, gain of about one or two yards for Jason Kao with nine minutes remaining here in the first half. Yeah, that's again he got uh, just about two yards if that on on the play maybe even a yard and uh, Jason uh, having a real good uh, first half here and just looking to bust something up the middle and uh, good good job by uh, Castle and again they, they, they're showing that they can stop the run on occasion but not on a consistent level two receivers set out to the near side for Kahuku second down and nine I formation they're gonna pitch this one back to Kao. Kale runs into his own man, but still on his feet, gaining about one or two yards once again. And, and Castle's doing a real good job uh, at points in here in the first half of, of, of sopping this play, and they need to be uh, consistent. Here it is again. It's going to be third down and about five or six, and uh, this is where Castle has to dig down deep, do what they've been doing consistently to get them here, and again, Google can throw or run in this situation. I suspect they're going to run. Third and six on the 47-yard line of Kahuku with just eight minutes remaining. Funaki play action once again. Funaki under pressure. Funaki sacked, hit, fumbled. It will be picked up by Castle. Running the ball back for the Castle Knights will be Bronson Tom. And Tom gets close to the end zone and is knocked just out of bounds at the half a yard line by Ken Favai and Bronson Tom almost leaving the defensive player's stream, scoring a touchdown, and even more so in the postseason. Uh, this is exciting. This is great football. This is the second time that uh, Kahuku's come up uh, with a turnover or a castle has come up with a Kahuku turnover, and that ball's on about the half-inch mark, and we're going to see the replay here. He's just looking for somebody to throw to. This is a coverage sack here, and he gets tripped up, and he just fell out loses the ball. They're scrambling for it here. Boy, he's going to pick it up, and he just sees six. There's a miss. Again, instead of going for the tackle, Keel tries to strip him, and that cost him 40 yards. Touchdown saving tackle by Ken Faavai. Castle once again a golden opportunity with seven minutes, 41 seconds remaining to get the handoff up the middle. Nothing doing there. I believe carrying the ball with Sean Kalelo Pono, and that will bring up second and goal. Well, he hit... Uh, he had what they call a wall, and he got pushed back. I don't think if he got back to the line of scrimmage, if he got back to that, and he lost about a foot. We're going to get an opportunity to see the replay here. Is he just ran into the right side of my house. He gets stopped there by number 85 from Kahuku and the rest of the defense, and he comes up. He lost yardage. Good job by Kahuku front. Once again, second and goal to go. Ball on the one-yard line for Castle. They're going to run this one to the outside. Touchdown, Castle Knights. Running the football for Castle was Chris Valdez as he gets his way into the end zone for a one-yard touchdown run with just six minutes, 57 seconds remaining, and they capitalize on the Kahuku turnover. Great job, great job reading the defense here. The, the left side of the Kahuku offense just blocked down and sealed, and he could have walked it in, and he could have pitched it in. That, uh, they had no defense on that side of the field whatsoever as he just got sealed. And uh, Castle could have just walked it in. Castle sidelines very happy as they're back this game. They're going for the two-point conversion, and it is good. Carrying the ball was Chris Valdez. They line up in an extra point formation similar to what the University of Hawaii runs. And this time, they just snapped the ball back to Valdez, and he ran it into the end zone for the two-point conversion. And they only trail by two points to the Kahuku Red Raiders, 13-11. And the Castle Chiefs are really, really happy now. So that was a very exciting two-point conversion. Hopefully, we'll see it on the replay. We'll see the replay here. The touchdown here is, again, you're going to see the just a the fake there. And you see the left side seal block by number 80 right there. And again, he could have walked it in, 
pitched it in number 80. And, you know, again, I hope we get a chance to see this extra point replay coming up. If uh, we can get on rewind that in the truck for us, it'd be great. Uh, but just a great job. He, lo he looks like he wants to be a helicopter pilot because this guy just looked like a, a helicopter whirly bird. Here's the replay here. Thanks, guys. You see just the, the snap back here, and he's going to get a block here by number 83, and he's just looking to run it or pass. And watch this, great. Just takes off at about the three-yard line, gets hit right into the end zone. Excellent, excellent play. Good, just, I'll tell you what, that's got to hurt when you hit. That's not grass he's falling on. That's cement. Kiha Schultz providing the assist as he was out blocking for the man of the hour, Chris Valdez. He not only scored the touchdown, he also got in on that nice little helicopter ride for the two-point conversion. With six minutes, 57 seconds remaining here in the first half, Castle trailing by two to the Kahuka Red Raiders. We have got a football game tonight here at the Aloha Stadium. As you see, head coach Pat Silva on the sidelines for the Castle Knights, and he definitely has to be pleased with the way his team has played. Oh, you got to be tickled pink. I mean, if you're a Castle fan, if you're Kahuku, you got to be wondering what's going on. It's, it's like before the game, I'm sure they were thinking, listen, these guys can't even pay to watch us practice. And I'll tell you what, these Castle, Castle Knights have really come to play. They have played. They're opportunistic. They've taken advantage of two turnovers by Kahuku, and it's kept them in the game. we got a two-point ball game here with seven minutes to go in the first half. And I'll tell you what, uh, on paper it didn't look like it was going to be close, but that's why they play the game. Kia Schultz once again will boot it away. This time will be Aalona as he touched the ball and he muffed it. It will bounce into the end zone. I believe we will have a touchback. We'll see what the officials call here. Alona kind of bumbling the ball back there as the special teams for the Castle Knights were quickly running down the field. Yeah, that's a touchback and uh, pretty fortunate for Kahuku. It didn't go out on a one-yard line. We get an opportunity to see the Jumbotron replay. Here's again, this is the second kickoff that's been mishandled by Kahuku. They didn't catch the ball in the air on the last one. They let it hit. And this one here is just bouncing around. He can't even get a handle on it. He's fortunate because Castle comes up with that. It's, it's first and ten ball on the 20 yard line for the Kahuka Red Raiders. They give that to Kale as he looks for yardage. Kale running into the pile, gaining about three or four yards. Jason Kale showing some tremendous strength, staying on his balance, gaining He's, about four yards on that play. I tell you, I've been impressed with uh, uh, Jason here tonight. Uh, again, 5'10", 200 pounds. That's a small, compact body, a little Norm Bulash of the uh, old Baltimore Colts type body. And uh, he's just going to pull his way forward for about five yards. And uh, again, Kuhuku's not going to get their bread and butter up the middle. They're going to come off tackle if they want to do anything. Second down and six for Kuhuku. Once again, they're look, looking for Jason Kale. Kale, nothing doing there as he has dropped for a loss. Making the play in the backfield, Bronson Tom for the Castle Knights. Yeah, they had a, a stunt on with the linebackers there. They were sending somebody. They pulled the guard. He just stepped up into the gap. He got tripped up at the line of scrimmage, but uh, he managed to get enough penetration to uh, grab him around the ankles and make the stop for for about a four-yard loss. He was in the backfield there. Uh, just a great individual effort. And Kuhuku, uh, they're all back on their heels right now. Jermaine Anderson and Ken Vavai have just entered the game. Third and nine for Kuhuku. They have it on their own 21-yard line. Funaki looking for some room. Funaki's going to run this one. Kolo Funaki with some room as he cuts back across the grain. Funaki trying to get around one man. Chasing him is Shane Kauhane. And Kauhane pushes him out of bounds at about the 34-yard line. And starting quarterback Kolo Funaki really making something happen here for the Red Raiders. Yeah, again, uh, lack of concentration on Castle as the uh, left side of the, uh, the left linebacker uh, failed to contain it. And then a good job by, by cutting it back up the seam, picking up some blockers, and then it's just a foot race. Good job by the Castle uh, defensive secondary to, to prevent that uh, from going into the end zone. First and 10, ball on the Castle 34-yard line after that scamper by Kolo Funaki. Jason Kao carrying the ball up to about the 30-yard line, bring up second and about five. Uh, and, and you know you teach your defensive people to you know try to prevent the big plays the big plays this is something that uh castle would love to have back second and six coming up here and uh a little disheartening after a big game like that uh, especially after just scoring a touchdown they've got to keep kuhuku out of the end zone here 
Castle trailing by 2 to the Kahuka Red Raiders, 13 to 11, with 4 minutes 45 seconds remaining here in the first half. Second and six for the Kahuka Red Raiders. They have it on the Castle 30 yard line. Jason Kale off the tackles one more time, and he will have first down yardage and just a little bit more as he gets a gain of about seven. Again, uh, the bread and butter for Kahuku is they're running off tackles, and that's where they're picking up most of their yardage. And this is no uh, different here. And they, they, you get an opportunity to see the replay. And again, right off tackle. Look at the hole there. You could drive a, a moving truck through there. And again, good job by 54 Castle, just holding on a kill and not letting go. And usually ankle tackles don't don't save uh, save save you from uh, a big game. But uh, fortunately, there he grabbed the hold and didn't let go. And with 419, 418 and counting, uh, they got to keep Kahuku out of the end zone. Jason Keo and Ken Falavai behind quarterback Kolo Funaki. And we'll have movement on the defensive line for the Castle Knights. I believe that will go against the Castle team defense. We'll see what happens. Yeah, this is pretty cut and dry. I mean, they don't even have to talk about this one. And, uh, again, you do it with the sound. You can't do it with body motion or head motion. But the quarterback can change his cadence up. They did that, and good play by the quarterback. You get an opportunity to see the replay here. And, uh, he moved his head. See, now, see, I thought he might have moved his head, and he did. They get the quick handoff, carrying the ball for Kahuka. was one of their running backs, gaining about a couple of yards. That was Faavai carrying the football. And maybe we can get a replay of that uh, offside penalty again. Uh, we, we see the... the the quarterback flinched his head. We got a personal foul against Kahuku, and that's going to hurt. That's going to hurt them. And uh, as we're getting back to that, the offsides, the quarterback for Kahuku flinched his head when he made the cadence call. That's illegal. You can't do that. The officials missed it, didn't pick it up. Uh, Castle jumped offsides and, and were penalized for it. Last week we did a game against St. Louis where Darnell did that against back five. They caught him. They penalized him for it. But... Uh, that's ILH officials. These are OIA officials. I believe we'll have the official call here. Personal foul against Kahuku. That's a dead ball play, so that's going to... It's still going to be a second. It should be second down. Oh, second down. I believe we'll be marked from the spot of the foul, so it will be first and 16. Second down and 16. Excuse me, second and 16. Jason Kale That's Jason Kale carrier. looking for some room, gaining about three yards as he broke a tackle. Five, uh, Jason's really impressed me again here in the first half. He did a good job last year. A <laughs> good job. That's an understatement. Uh, last year as a leading uh, ILH uh, rusher uh, in the, the ILH league uh, last year playing Kale for Damien. And, uh, play. Unfortunately for him, uh, an injury kept him out of... Uh, Every Third game except uh, last week's game All and this game. And six. he's showing me that he's picked up right where he left off. Three minutes remaining here in the first half. Kahuku's football third and 13 on the Castle 26. That one's for Falvai. Falvai got some open room. Falvai looking for the end zone. Hurdles over man. Touchdown. Ken Falvai for the Kahuku Red Raiders as he made a nifty little scamper into the end zone. Off the little screen flare pass, whatever you want to call it, call it along the sidelines. And Falvai did the rest as he followed his blockers. You know, this is exactly what you like to teach your quarterback and your offensive front when you're running a screen. This screen is perfectly executed. The, the Kuku offensive front led the defense in. They baited them, held them for a two second count, let them go. Quarterback drifted back, drifted back. Caught the receiver out there on the left latch. You get an opportunity to see the, the Kuku band here. And uh, you know, he could have walked it in there because the defender fell down and there was nobody and he had four blockers still in front of him. G greatly executed. They're gonna go for two points there. Funaki with three backs behind him. They're going to give it to Aalona. Aalona looking for the end zone. Aalona scampers his way and we'll see what the call is. And it is good for the two-point conversion. And so Isaac Aalona gets the two-point conversion, giving them a 21-11 lead over the Castle Knights with two minutes, 49 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Excellent uh, choice of plays here. They, they used to go on off tackle, off tackle, or up the middle. Here they just go full house backfield. You get an opportunity to see the replay here. Uh, this is the touchdown here. Again, he's got four blockers out in front of him, and he's got one defender there, number 10. Here's number uh, number nine, and, and again, well, they could have called that one uh, block in the back, but uh, they didn't. Uh, he would have walked in anyway. 
Shane Kalhani trying to galley an effort, trying to use one arm just to chip up Fawavai on his way into the end zone. But nothing doing as Fawavai was just able to hurdle over his arm, getting into the end zone. Two minutes, 49 seconds remaining here. First half at the Aloha Stadium. Hiola booting it away. Back to receive is Solomon Lee. He'll pick it up at the five-yard line. Lee looking for some room, still on his feet. Hands off to number nine. And we will have a bra Kalani. man brought down at the 15-yard line. Down on the field. Yeah, you're going to have a personal foul against uh, Kahuku uh, Spearing. Uh, number 43 for Kahuku came in and just stuck his helmet in there, and that's illegal. We're going to get a face mask. Uh, good call by our director. Uh, we're getting an opportunity to see it on the replay here. A little, little reverse here. Uh, again, he exposed the ball a little too soon, and We'll see number 43 right there. Here it is with the re with the he let go, but uh, not before the official saw him. And uh, they got the ball on the 31-yard line. There's still First enough time here to score, Toronto. but they're not going to have uh, the deep patterns the 31 -yard line. to throw to because of the Kahuku rush. First down and 10, ball on the 31-yard line with two and a half minutes remaining here in the second quarter. Castle trailing by 10, 21 to 11 is our Hale score. Hale. Kahuku on top. Han under pressure. Han is going to be sacked in the backfield by a whole host of Red Raiders defenders. Yeah, instead of picking out one, we'll just say the whole defensive front four because they were all in there. They know he's got to throw the ball. He would be wise to just get rid of that ball. He, he could see the rush coming. He's holding his hand there. Looks like he got squeezed between helmets. You see the replay. And again, he just had no place to go and he just tucks it under and he's looking for a place to fall down. I'm out. And we're going to have a timeout called on the field as Castle decides to talk this one over. Two minutes and eight seconds remaining. Khalil Han still shaking his wrist a little bit, trying to get some blood back into it. Um, maybe he's even get the pain to go away as he talks to the coaches along the sideline, among them head coach Pat Silva. Yeah. And Castle still in his football game, trailing only by 10 points. It would be really nice if he could march this one down the field and into the end zone before the half. Well, Kuku has one timeout if you get an opportunity. Look, he's holding his hand. He's hurt. He's certain he's trying to work it out. So he, he got smashed between a helmet and the turf. Uh, and w whether or not he comes back in or not, uh, probably doesn't look like he is. He's on the sideline there. So they might they might have subbed for him already. But uh, Kahuku's got one timeout with 208. Yeah, they might look to try to score again. Knowing Doug Simone's, uh, he doesn't have enough points at 21. That's that's not enough points. And you see Castle coming back on. We got a new quarterback. Uh, checking into the game right now. That will be Chris Valdez, the backup quarterback. He's a 5'10", 165-pound senior. I mean, excuse me, junior. We'll see what he does here. Chris Valdez, Valdez will run it, and he will be brought down by the Kahuku defense, led by Bronson Miranda. Once again, we'll have penalty markers down on the play. But new quarterback for the Castle Knights, Chris Valdez. He's passed for Passed 27 times this season for 14 completions, 196 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions, as we have the official call. We got motion against Castle. We got face mask against Kahuku, and that is, that's going to off that's going to offset uh, both penalties. And I and I think that's a rule change that the uh, league needs to look at because you got a flagrant uh, face a flagrant foul like that. It's a 15-yard penalty, and a motion penalty is five yards. I think one should negate the other, but. I'm just an announcer, not a not on the committee. So uh, they'll run this play all over again. And 149 left to go, and a new quarterback. We'll work to get you on that officials committee. How's that? Hello. Bill Lewis got to be on that officials committee next season. Okay. Second and 17, ball on the 24-yard line for Castle. Number they hand it off up the middle, gain of about one yard, Herman. bring up third down and about 16 Mark to go. Ball. Yeah, and I've been saying here it is, Kahuku taking the timeout. Uh, like I suspected, Doug Simone is not happy. He wants more points this half, and uh, 45 points wouldn't be enough for uh, uh, this coach from uh, a past experience. Uh, tells me, you know, he's averaging, uh, this, this Kahuku team right here is averaging over 46 points a game. 46 points a game. There are some teams that haven't scored 46 points all season. All right, they're only giving up 15 points. Uh, as you get an opportunity to see uh, Doug here, and, and 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 he's telling them, I read his lips right here, saying, "Hey, we want more points." 21 to 11 is our score. We'll be back here at the Loha Stadium in just a moment. 
darkness at the haunted house of horrors a benefit for the march of dimes presented by the humble jc's challenge the night the night brave the freights of hum's premier halloween happening appearing the last two weekends of october at the ward warehouse we'll be lurking for you at the haunted house of horrors <laughs> And my oh my, is it Halloween already? As we see starting quarterback Kaleo Han come back into the football game for the Castle Knights. So he, I guess apparently he wasn't spooked too much as he was only out for a couple of plays. Little surprise here that they might even put the ball up in the air. There's still a lot of time left to go in the game. Uh, he's not going to have time to throw the ball. Kaleo Han. And that you're right as Han is immediately put under pressure and he is going to be dropped in the backfield. And once again, another sack against the Castle Knights offense. As the, the Cougar Red Raiders defensive line has just really taken over here in the maybe the latter part of the second quarter. Well, again, we touched on it earlier. You know, they, they don't have enough time uh, to throw that deep pattern pass. So they've been very effective with the two step drop, three step drop, and anything uh, requiring a deeper step, five or seven, which is anything down the field is going to hurt. Shane Kalhane back to punt it away. Gets a pretty good punt off. Will be fielded by Keola Wilkins at the 49. Wilkins slipping Hello, a little Wilkins bit as he got look, looked like he got caught under the turf, but he works his way back for a gain of about 12 yards on the return. Wilkins yeah, he tried to change directions 15, and then change his mind and wanted to go back the other way again and lost his balance. And, you know, he was still effective in picking up about 15 yards. We're going to see the replay of the punt return here. Again, they let the ball bounce on the carpet a little bit too much tonight. And you see the slip here and good balance. Colo Fanaki looking to pass on first down. And it will be incomplete. Pass intended for Termaine Anderson. On coverage was Chris Valdez, the backup quarterback for Castle, making the big play along with Kyle Kalama. Again, you get two receivers in the same area. I'm sure they don't want that. As you get an opportunity to see the replay, here's uh, double coverage. Here's a free safety comes over to make the make uh, help over here. Is number 24 tips it, and good good play by the free safety who who hit the receiver out of the way as opposed to the ball. He still could have come up with the ball there had the free safety not knocked him down. 25 seconds remaining. Kahuku out of timeouts. They're up by 10 points, 21 to 11. Funaki finds a man over the middle. That will be complete. Looking for the end zone was the receiver, Solomon, excuse me, Sakalia Magale. And they're going to try to get one more playoff here with 16 seconds remaining. He's going to down the ball here. He's just going to take the snap and then down the ball. That's Kahuku guys trying to get in it. Uh, Pass completion goes for 26 yards. On first down, they will Polo pass the Polo ball. Polo it will be Polo intended Polo for Sakalia Magale, but he was also kind of just throwing Magale. it out of bounds, which will stop the clock with seven seconds remaining here at the end of the first half. Now, most teams here, when they're up uh, 21 to 11, they're going to kick the field goal. Uh, Kahuku again, they're pensioned for uh, scoring a lot of points. Uh, they're going to go for the. They're going to go for seven. Second down and ten. 21 to 11 is our score. Kahuku Red Raiders on top and looking for more before they head back into the locker rooms. Seven seconds remaining. Kahuku is out of timeouts. Funaki will look for the end zone. Has a man complete. Touchdown. Pass was complete to Marvin Cravens and he gets a touchdown for the Kahuku Red Raiders, giving them a 27 to 11 lead here with one second left in the first half. Exactly what Castle did not want. They had to hold them for one more play. They had no timeouts. All they did was defend one play. They couldn't do it. Uh, Kahuku comes up with six, and they'll probably go for the two-point conversion here. Again, they were successful on the only time they did kick the ball. Uh, so uh, interesting to see what... Uh, yeah, they, were, they, were, they got their full house package in there now. Three running backs behind Kolo Funaki. They'll give this one to Kale. Kale will get into the end zone Number for 20, the two-point conversion, Kale. and that and will give the Kahuka Red Raiders a 29 to 11 one lead second, here towards the end half. of the first half. Yeah, he for went in untouched, and you know, for a goal line situation, uh, that's a little surprising. A little let down by Castle defense, and we're getting an opportunity to see the replay here of the uh, touchdown. All day again to throw the ball. Wide open in the corner of the end zone, six points and uh, 29 to 11. We'll have the replay here, the extra point. It's a full house backfield for uh, Kuhuku. 
now. Right here, he just hands it off to Keel, follows number 54. And, uh, yeah, I stand corrected. He did get touched, Put but uh, in that's incidental Oku, contact, Victor and he just Hano. walked in. And two points and one second to go here, and that, that, that's got to hurt uh, Castle. Victor Hyola will kick it off for the Kahuku Red Raiders. Back to receive is Solomon Lee for the Knights. And a nice booming kick fielded by Lee in the end zone for a touchback. One second All left on the clock, the so they have one tick to get a playoff. They'll have it on the 20-yard line. Uh, as soon as they set the ball, the clock will start. So they won't even get a snap. Castle Knights do have two timeouts. It is listed as first and 10 on the 20-yard line after the touchback. Castle Knights trailing 29 to 11. Yet the Castle Knights have played quite a close game. As you see, the starting quarterback, Kaleo Han, lead his troops up. And apparently he'll just take a knee here and they'll head back to the locker room and regroup. As you see him take a knee. 29 to 11 our score. Kahuku Red Raiders on top of the Castle Knights. But yet the score could actually be closer than what it really appears to be. Actually the game is closer than the 29 to 11 that we see up on the board uh, as the teams head back to uh, the locker room at halftime. And uh, again, that, you go back to the score here just uh, before the end of the half with one second on the clock. And... Uh, Castle could have done a better job defending that, but you know that's why Kahuku is at the top of the Red Division. Uh, they won five games and uh, didn't lose all year uh, in a regular season. Uh, take your hats off to Castle; they played a good game so far. Castle Knights really have had played a good game. Team showing a lot of heart, but at the same time, watch out for Isaac Aalona. He's had a tremendous first half, and he'll we'll be back for more Aalona antics and more. Once again, to Kahuku Red Raiders 29, Castle Knights 11. We'll be back for more. It's a gorgeous night here at the Lowe's Stadium. For Bill Lewis, I'm Blaine Colley. We'll be back for the second, second half. And welcome back to Aloha yes, Stadium uh, with Gerald Cullen and Dominic Ritira as he's about to start the second half of this Kahuku and Castle game. Kahuku up 29-11 and we had an interesting first half, didn't we, Gerald? Yes, uh, very surprising. Castle stayed in there. Uh, they elected to kick off and put Kahuku powerhouse offense on the field. They stopped them, got some momentum. Castle was in the game all the way till the last minute of the first half Kahuku scored with a second about five seconds left in the first half that uh, kind of pulled uh, the game away but Castle is still in there and a kickoff by Victor Ha'aola and a ball taken by number 87 Solomon Lee gets across the 20 yard line be first and 10 for Castle Castle first half was doing a lot of slants in Han looking for his big receiver, Chris Pagoya, wide receiver, 60, 200 pounds, junior. We'll see if they go right back at that. That kept them into the game the first half. And we'll see if uh, Kuku figured it out here on the replay on the kickoff. It's going straight up the field, looking for some uh, seams, gets hit. And a snap taking by. Valdez, Valdez goes deep and it's complete and it's caught by number 88, Chris Pagoyo. And Castle goes right back to the big man, Chris Pagoyo, who played a great first half. Han, that was his man the whole first half and he went right back to him again. As you see here, the flight of the ball, Pagoyo turning around. Great catch, keeping his eye on the ball, steps in, bounce. Great concentration. Good for the first down as you take a look at the Castle cheerleaders. That's their fourth first down of the game for Castle. And now checking in back at quarterback, Kaleo Han. Quick toss to the outside, and it's incomplete, intended for Shane Kalhane, the receiver. 
Han just tried to get it out on a quick flat pass out there to Kahani with a quick block and uh, just went awry on the pass there. You see the flight of the ball going left. Just threw it down low. Good thing he threw it low. Eric Tivago was right there. Could have picked it off, ran it back for a touchdown. Han uh, lines up in the shotgun, shotgun formation and gets it to Pagoyo again, and it's incomplete. He's the intended receiver. Went right back to their uh, game plan of the first half on a quick slant to Pagoyo. He had it in his hands. He just dropped it. You see Han here. He's looking straight, slant pass again, finding the seam there just off of his arm there. Was raining all first half on a little drizzle here and there. Ball still probably wet from the carpet. Third down and 10 for Castle. 11 16 in the third quarter. Scores 29 11, and it's going to be the quarterback, Kaleo Han, getting sacked and making the sack for Kohuku Nolan Alo. Great play by Alo, came off his defensive. Right side, you see Han, you see the ending of the play there, Alo. But the first half as well, as soon as Han gets out of his uh, pocket, he gets rushed and sacked. He stay in the pocket and look for his, for his receiver staying in the pocket. Booting the ball for Castle, Umiyamaka, and the ball is out of bounds at about the 19-yard line. It'll be first down at 10 for Kohuku. See what Castle defense can do here. Stop Kahuku's powerhouse offense, averaging 400-something yards a game. Uh, Castle played a terrific first half. Still in the game. If they can get some uh, quick turnovers and stay, turn that turnovers into some points, they get the momentum right back. Kahuku, Funaki, back to pass. Gets it to Anderson, the intended receiver, but it's incomplete again. On the pass to Anderson. Funaki tried a quick hitch pass out to the left. Anderson just took his eyes off the ball and dropped the ball there. There you see the Zippy's replay one more time. Funaki just a quick, actually the ball got tipped there by the Castle defensive end. And then Anderson just uh, lost the ball. Great and play by the Castle defensive end there. Anderson in the regular season had 12 catches. Drops the previous pass. And there's a long shot, and it's incomplete. Intended for Preston Taylor defending him. Number nine, Sean Kahane. Funaki showing his strength there, rolling left, throwing across his body. And he threw that ball at least 30 yards, 40 yards in the air. Perfect pass. You see the flight of the ball here. Just outreach. Just on his outreach there. He kind of slowed down on the uh, route there. If he kept going straight, he would have probably caught up with that ball, Dominic. 10-22. Third quarter. The Red Raiders of Kahuku lead at 29-11. Third down at 10. Funaki rolls out. Try, has lots of time and gets it complete. And making the catch for number for Kahuku, number 87, Saka Lia Magale, the tight end. See Funaki rolling right again and getting chased out of the pocket. Finds Magale, makes the catch for a short gain, bring a fourth down. Great pressure there by Castle linebacker. The pass was in. Kakio. The pass was in. The, Enough for the first down, so Kuku will have to punt. And the ball rolls to about the 40-yard line. Still good, full good field position for Castle. See what Castle can do with their offense, get some momentum back on their offense. Defense did a great job on that series. Now their offense got to do their end of the ball game now here. And we've pointed out that Castle, they got a, a few two-way players, so it looks like it's not really affecting them. Here in the second half, as it doesn't look like, look like they're that weary. It could 
taking effect into the fourth quarter, and Castle got to get on the score scoreboard now, keep the game close, because like you pointed out, two-way players, it's going to be hard in the fourth quarter, especially with Kahuka, how big they are and quick. Ball is taking for a pass, and it's incomplete. Pagoyo, the intended receiver. Pagoyo just kind of stopped in his route there, looking at his defender, and I don't know if he was trying to put the defender to sleep and then try to take off on a quick route down the sideline, but it just wasn't looking for the ball at all, and it just got overthrown by Han. That's the third incomplete pass to Pagoyo, so he hasn't caught nothing yet in the third quarter. Second and ten. The ball gets away from Han. Han has to jump on the ball, and he gets a big loss as the ball is down at the 17-yard line. Center just snapped the ball over Han's head. I mean, way over Han's head, as you see here. About five yards over his head. Han did a great job to get back on the ball and just lay on it. There you see the head coach of Castle, Pat Silva, taking a look at he as he's not that much of a happy man after that play there. Looking for some of his uh, players there that kind of getting frustrated on what the offense is doing out on the field. Must find some kind of connection, give their defense some rest keep the Kahuko offense off the field and put some points on the scoreboard. Castle takes a timeout at 8.27 in the third quarter. That's their first timeout. They'll have the ball third and 31 on that play as they're at the 20-yard line. Coach, as you see here, Castle sideline still cheering. As we haven't seen them for a while. Close to Halloween. And here's the first half highlights. Sacking Han. And now we're back to playing action. And when you say uh, terrific places. defense, they're number one in the red during the regular season. Giving up only 88 points all season long. Han has the fine rule, running room, and he tries to get it, but he's going to get pushed down at about the 36-yard line, and flags fly after the play. Could be a late hit. Could be a late hit, could be unsportsmanlike conduct. That'll give uh, Castle automatic first down. Uh, Han had to scramble again. As you see the call here, Mel Cortero, personal fall, Kahuku. But Han got pressured again, found the seam up on the right side, picked up about a good 16 yards on the run, and then another 15 yards on a penalty. And we've seen this kind of penalties early in the first quarter. Just right. before the half ended, um, it surely hasn't affected Kahuku. We, we saw Kahuku with some uh, penalties. I see Doug Simone's over there shaking his head, wondering what kind of call that was. But yes, Kahuku did get away with a couple of uh, face marks just before the end of the first half. And the ending, getting right back into the second half with some penalties. Big penalty for Castle here. And maybe that penalty didn't give them the first down. Maybe they missed the first down by the nose of the ball. But it's going to be close. I think he got it. Oh, Just short. Like, it looks like about a couple of inches. You're right, Dominic. Well, with fourth and one, it looks like Castle will go for it as... They really need to with 8 17 uh, and they're down 29 to 11. 
Castle really has to hit the line hard and quick. Remember, there was up on the goal line in the first half. They really had a hard time getting in right up the middle. He's going to really have to par. And they give it to taking a ball is number 10. That's Cruz Valdez. He gets the first down, gets inside Kahuku territory with 8-10 in the third quarter. Castle Red Kahuku's defense is going to come right up the middle, try to stop the play there. He went wide. Valdez, better running back, running runner as a quarterback than Han, and he takes it out on the right side. Picks up the first down. Good tackle. Hit out of bounds there by Miranda. And so at the 40-yard line, first and 10 for Castle. Valdez stays in quarterback, and he stopped at the scrimmage line as he's hit hard by one of the Kuku offensive linemen. And making the stop there, number 88 for Kuku, Alvin Manutai. What a big hit on a sideline. Manutai just put his helmet right into Valdez's helmet. Valdez got rushed out of the pocket again, running towards the Kahuku sideline. You see, just before, they, before he steps out of bounds, what, it looks like his, neck got, his neck got whiplashed there. He stepped out of bounds. That could have been a penalty. But the momentum of the Kahuku player, it wasn't a dirty hit at all. Just a good, hard hit. That was a loss of one. It's second 11. Han comes in quarterback, it's tipped. And so it's an incomplete pass. Pagoyo was the intended receiver on that play. One of the, as we take a look at the replay, let's see who made the tip. Defensive line, outside linebacker came in there and, and got the tip there. And again, Castle is going to have to convert right here on third and 11. Koku shows blitz. They go deep. They got one receiver open, and it's intercepted. And uh, making the interception, Dana Wools Woolsley for the Red Raiders. Great defensive play by Woolsley. Catching up with the flight of the ball. Making a great interception. You see Han's eyes just loading up and throwing the flight of the ball there. You see Woolsey just at the end of this play. Jumping in. Great camera work. Great concentration. Hung onto the ball and fingertips. Great, great interception. Woolsey making the interception. And... On that play, Chris Pagoyo on the interception play, he was double team on that play. Kahuku just using, just following the big guard and tackles. Aolona. Funaki. And getting the ball to Jason Kale, stopped at the scrimmage line. It'll be again third and six. Kahuku using Kale and Aalona all night. Kale coming from uh, Damien from the ILH going to the OIA got hurt at the beginning of the in, in the preseason. Didn't get to play very much up till last week. And he's showing his what his strengths are in this game tonight. On third down the they pitch out to Aalona. Aalona tries to get through, gets the first down, and he's stopped by Chris Valdez, who's also the quarterback for the offensive unit. What a great hit by Chris Valdez. Put his shoulder pads right into Aalona's. As you see Funaki pitching out, just a great option play there. Breaks one tackle, and then Valdez coming up from his defensive back position. Great tackle. Alono's kind of falling back there, but makes the hit look a lot harder than it was. But it's just a great tackle by Valdez. Got a down player for Castle. As 
We take a look. The injured player on the play, he's a bit shaken up. And with 619, and he. Go to that concert, Eagles. Haven't been here 16 years ago. On the previous play, the injured player. Number 54, Kamalani Ka Kale. Kale gets the ball, he gets running room, and he's short about the first down. It'll be second and eight. Second and two on the play. Kahuku with a just a power sweep left, following the average offensive line, 275 pound offensive line, and Kale just picks up good yardage, about eight yards, eight and a half yards. You see Kale following his blockers. Great block by the fullback. Fa'avai. Five and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. They give it to Fa'avai. Fa'avai gets the first down. He gets more yardage, gets across the 30, and he'll score for a touchdown, Kohuku. What a great run by Fa'avai, lined up in the eye position. He was a front eye man. You can either go left, right, or up the middle. He went a little left, found a big cavity in the castle defensive front. Broke one tackle at about the 45-yard line of Castle. Romped it all the way in. Could have ran to Wainai. Could have ran to Kaneoi. To the Wilson Tunnel. So much. Could have ran back to Kahuku. Could have ran back to Kahuku. Nobody's going to stop him on that <laughs> play now. You're right. 5-13. The score by Fa'avai. His first touchdown here in the postseason. As Kahuku elects to go for two. They line up in the power eye formation. And he gets it. Aalona scores the two points, puts them ahead. 37 to 11 with 513 in the third quarter. Kahuku just burying Castle now. No one touched Aalona on that extra point for two. And I guess now that going two ways is probably wearing them out for Castle. You see here, Favai just Breaks back out right, breaks a tackle there by Valdez, follows his blocker here, just rips through Kauhani's tackle, and he is looking like I'll see folks back at school. Castle players trying to catch him from behind, there's no way. That touchdown just before the first half really hurt Castle, really gave Kahuku the momentum, and, and Kahuku is carrying it on right here in the second half. As you see here on this extra point here, no one touches Alon. He just, he could have walked in. Huge cavity on the right side. There you see. Keola Wilkins for Kahuku. And as we take a look at tour around Aloha Stadium, some of the castle cheerleaders still got their hopes high which is what school spirit is all about and they're just glad to be here um, they've been absent for six years since their last uh, meeting against Kahuku in the playoffs they were a rival in, in the division but now that we got three different divisions and the ball is taken to the 15 yard line Making the run, Solomon Lee. Lee just gets buried on that kickoff. You see here, him getting the ball at the one, scoring, running straight up, and he just gets mobbed by practically a whole Kahuku kickoff team. Where is your blockers? Help. First and 10 for the Knights at the, their own 16-yard line. Han gets the pass through, and it's incomplete to Bay Rombawa. And Rombawa slowly to get up as he's hit hard on the, that play there. Tried a different receiver there, Rombawa, as Han tried to a quick Slant pass into Rombawa, just off his fingertips.
good defensive play there. You can't ask for a better uh, defense from the defensive back. He was all over Rumbaugh. They'll try it again at the 16-yard line. Ooh, and another incompleted pass, a hard hit there as the receiver there double teamed on the play. Foster really got popped by Tivaga. As you see here, Foster on a quick slant out left, hitch pass his Han flight of the ball, and you see Tivaga come right in and just, oh, got sandwiched by Boat. And he's on the field. Tivaga and Miranda put the crunches on that end of that play. Looks like he got rocked hard on that play as he's still down. When you get back to the bench, you tell the quarterback, man, you just set me up on a big hit there. And with 426, Castle down 37 to 11 with Kuhuku in the lead. Back to Aloha Stadium, Gerald Cullen, Dominic Ridera. There you see Thomas Foster that rocked on the previous play. Got back to his feet as a cheer, as he had some cheers from the crowd. It's good to see. Han rolls out to the far side, gets the ball loose, and it's almost picked off, making the play there. Almost had the pick off. Jeremy Gonzalez, the defensive back. And the castle goes down four down as they'll have to punt. See Han getting brought, flushed out again. It's the ending of the play here. Wouldn't have been complete anyway. They're both out of bounds. But the defensive back was there again. Han got flushed out left again on that play. Every time he goes out of his pocket, he gets rushed. And the defense is right there on him. Castle just being shut out here in the third quarter. Schultz does the boot and it just exits at about the 50 yard line. Might have looked like a bad kick, but in a good, in a way, a good kick, keeping it out of Wilkins' hands. But Kahuku in great field position. Nakamura walking to the sideline. So the Red Raiders get first and 10 at the 50-yard line. 4-10 in the third quarter. Kahuku up ahead, 37 to 11. Funaki, screen pass to Alona is good, and he gets close to the first down, and he should get it. He's over to about the 36. Crab with a trip up tackle there just a fingertip tackle all on would have been gone again Dominic a good play this play went big in the first half they come back with it again just a good touch by Fonaki all on showing some great hands and a, trying to keep his balance but a great tackle saving tackle so the ball is now down at the 40 yard line First and 10. Jason Kale gets the ball. He breaks his way through, gets through about a couple of tackles, and he's put down at the 32 yard line. Kale showing his quickness off the ball. As you see him getting a handoff from Funaki, finding the hole there. Makes Kahuko offensive line just opening up some gaping holes, and Kale showing his running ability. He could have been the first running back here in the state to run for a thousand yards in each uh, high school ILH as well as OIA. Just too bad he got hurt in the preseason, Dominic. But he's showing his stuff tonight, and Kauku's really using him well. That would have been a sight to see, actually. Alona gets the ball. He gets away, and he should get into the end zone. And another touchdown by 
Kohuku. 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 Now, they put it up 43 to 11. Kahuku Dominic now just showing their their size, their quickness. Two-way plane from Castle really taking its toll. Kahuku showing why they were number one in the red division, why they average 446 yards, almost 447 yards per game, 277 points during the regular season. And they're showing why there is a blue division and a red division and they're showing it here in the second half. They will go for one as Hiola, Victor Hiola, misses the extra point. So they'll stay at 43 to 11. In fact, the Red Raiders, a win tonight is their march on for their, f for their fourth appearance to a prep bowl title. Let's take a look at the replay. This is a touchdown. Alona just, what a huge hole. Great stiff arm there. You see that in so many great backs, that strong stiff arm, and he just trots in, no one even close. Just like practice, smile on his face. Kahuku not feeling the pressure at all. I think it was a wake up call in the first half, and whatever Doug Simmons told him in the locker room, really showing it here in the second half. Castle Chile is still cheering. That's what it's all about. It's school spirit and personal pride. And like you were saying, this would be their fourth uh, try for the OIA champions. And they feel they have an opportunity to beat St. Louis. They feel this team, this is the year that they can dethrone St. Louis from the prep bowl with their running backs, their line, defense. They feel this is the one. And they do have what it takes this season with a, a great lineup. I mean, tremendous offensive line. All of them average about six feet, 250 pounds. Um, you can't ask anything better as the kickoff is taken by Castle. And the ball is finally taken to about the 23 yard line. And now we have 2.35 in the third quarter. Kahuku is up ahead 43 to 11. Kahuku's special teams tonight is just excellent. Really stopping Castle, not giving them any open seams at all on a kickoff. Cataluna there on the screen. Defensive lineman for Castle. Kaole Lopono gets the ball. And that should be close to a first down. It'll be second and two. You see the handoff. Kaole Lopono just going right up. Breaks a tackle there. Six feet, 155 pounds senior. Showing his balance there. Ale Lopono goes in motion. And Nolan Alo makes the sack, and that's his second sack of this game. Han looked like he thought he had a running back behind him. He's going to, like, pitch out off that shotgun. And like you said, he went in motion. No one back there. No one to block the defensive end from coming in. And he just put a big hit. Alo, again, pressuring Han all night. Just a broken play here. Han... Just gets collared. Looks like his neck was going to be broken. It looks like almost like a rodeo. The way Kahuku's playing right now. Sure looks like Castle is the calf getting thrown all over the place. Under a minute of play in the third quarter. Back to pass is Han. Han gets it complete to Thomas Foster. And it's taken to about the 25 yard line on the play. And it'll be fourth down, and again, Castle will be forced to punt. See Han here, backing up on a screenplay. Good try by Castle, but Kahuku is just playing an all-around game here in the second half. 
looks like the defensive coordinator is knowing what Castle is going to run already, and they're just stopping Castle, Castle in all part of this game. Kalhani gets the boot, and it's taken by number six for Kuhuku, Jeremy Gonzalez. And penalty flags on the field. We'll see what's the call. Referee Mel Quartero. Gonzalez almost broke it there. Wanted to get into the scoring category too there. Get his name up. Almost broke it. Concentration on the ball. Got some uh, illegal blocking there by Kahuku pushing on the back. So what we thought was going to be a, a very good game in the first half. Uh, second half, uh, Kuku just totally ran away. As you check, take a look at Doug Simonis. As Mel Cortero makes the call there, kind of mixed up there. The first thought said illegal, you know, pushing. Legal use of the hands, and then he went, looks like a delay of the game. I, I really don't know what he's calling. And another flag gets thrown before the play ever started. With 11 seconds left in the third quarter, it's now 43 to 11. Like you said, the first half was a big surprise to all of us. Castle stayed in, in the game. They were in the game. Just before the half, kind of a disaster for Castle, and, and Kahuku just took that no momentum right into the third quarter in the second half and just starting to blow Castle out now. And that's going to be it for the third quarter after that penalty by Kohuku. And at the end of the third quarter, Kohuku leading in a much comfortable lead, a 32-point lead. They're up ahead 43-11. to 11. And nothing much doing for Castle as they have to get some scoring points. During the season, we've looked at it. They've just averaged about 14 points per game. And that's what's going to hurt them here in the playoffs. We'll be back here at Aloha Stadium. Take a look at the castle bench back to Aloha Stadium as we we're about to start the fourth quarter. Kohuku up ahead 43 to 11. In fact, uh, their next matchup next week, Kohuku uh, will face the winner of uh, our second of a double header, Farrington versus Kailua, which should be an interesting matchup it there. Be a real great game. Castle lives by the pass first half they were living by the pass they've been shut down here in the second half with the pass when you play a Kahuku team is as powerful as that you have to have an all-around game and Kahuku just figured it out and just stopped Castle cold here and now the ball taken by Eddie Rama excuse me Kikua Auma making the run there for Kahuku. Kahuku bringing in their their subs now, giving them an opportunity to play in, in this playoffs, get them experience for later dates in the for uh, upcoming games. And with the score 43 to 11 and Kahuku being uh, brought up about running up scores, I think this is a great move for Doug Simmons to put some of his second team in. And uh, Amua gets the ball again. Gets about two yards on the play. Making a stop for Castle. Number, 40, number 44, Bronson Tom. 
You see Amua getting a handoff from Taylor, second string quarterback there. Castle defensive linebacker came up, filled the gap nicely. There you see a closer shot of these. Preston Taylor coming in for Funaki. Ball given to Jason Keo. Jason breaks a tackle and heads down the sidelines. And he's going to enter the end zone again. And touchdown for Kohuku. Keo just showing his quickness off the ball. He hits the hole very quick, Dominic. All night I, I've saw that. He just You can see his ability. Kohuku is really setting up for the OAA championship with this running back of Kael. It just opens up with Funake quarterback. What a great all-around quarterback. And Kael just showing his stuff there. 50-something yard TD run. He hit that hole like it was still the first quarter. And there you see Victor Haiole. will be doing his duties for the point after. You got to give the offensive line for Kahuku credit too. They've been making some huge holes. And uh, that's uh, Victor Hayoli's second miss on the PATs. Score stays 49-11 with 10:38 in the fourth quarter. Like Doug Simon said, uh, they don't really have a good kicking, and it's showing now, and that's why they have to go for two a lot. And they got criticized while running on the score. As you see Kael just hitting the hole, lined up in high position. Can go left or right up the middle. He hit right, huge cavity on the right side, and he just trots down the sideline, showing his speed. What a great acquisition for Kahuku. And if I could just imagine if they had him all season long, maybe they'd be averaging over 500 yards a game offensively, Dominic. I, St. Louis got to, you know, I, I'm not jumping to conclusions here and saying St. Louis is going to end up in a prep bowl, but this could be the year. And uh, as you take a look at Kohuku, now Castle, kind of much of a letdown as they... Entered the playoffs with high hopes, trying to make one, maybe one of the biggest upsets, but it won't happen tonight. With Kahuku, it is all with their all-around game, with their talent. Castle getting a break during the regular season as Radford was found guilty of having an older player playing for them, and Castle got into the playoffs. And Kahuku showing the difference between the red division and the blue division. This is a rivalry that went back many years when they were in the same division. Castle was great in the late 70s. They went to the playoffs and won a championship. But it's been a rebuilding situation for Castle. Iola makes the kick. The ball taken at the 15. And it's going to be run back. And he's going to be tackled down at Ooh. the... 36 yard line making the run Thomas Foster and he's brought down real quickly by the kicker Victor Haole and penalty flags after the play and that was a great call got a little cocky at the end of the play there brought him down kept him in his hands lifted him up again flags came in late but Doug Simone's got to get control of that kind of action they're a great football team. They don't need to throw salt in the wound, as you say. Great run back on a kickoff. Castle still fighting, still trying, showing their spirit. See Foster tuck, keeping two hands on a ball. And then you see this extra lifts him up again, drags him a little bit. And I got the flags. Just tossed him like a rag doll. Kuku gets over the 50-yard line. I'm sorry, Castle gets over the 50-yard line. And the ball is taken to Bay Rumbawa, who gets over to the 40-yard line. Castle with a slant play. Rumbawa kind of out of his uh, position there. See the handoff to Rumbawa following his lead blocking. Sean Kalelepono leading as fullback. 
making a great block there, giving them some extra yardage. Hahn stays in the game as the ball is taken by Solomon Lee and is stopped for a loss. Making the stop there, number 22, TJ Magale. Castle has gone away from their slant to their big Chris Pagoyo, and they've been running the ball here, and Kahuku's just waiting for him. As you see a great hit by Fifita. Excuse me if I'm pronouncing the name wrong there. 195 pound senior coming off his right outside linebacker position. Third and five, that looks like one of the linemen for Castle, drawn for a false start. Umiya Maka, tight end, moved. Number 82, the right side of the offensive line. His tight end position just got a little anxious there. Surprising Castle running the ball so much as you see here on the top right on the screen. Lifting up out of his position, out of his stance. Castle running the ball down 49 to 11. I think they should have done that maybe in the second quarter as well as the third quarter. Kind of mix it up. Kahuku just knows the game plan. Han is pressured, gets the ball off, and it's complete. What a catch, Carlo. Paulo Lopono making the reception. Han getting pressured. What a great toss, nice touch. See the fight of the ball again. Great camera work, see the threads, toss. Just watching the ball come into his hands. Great catch there by Sean Kale Lepono. And he makes the first down as Castle stays alive on this drive here. The ball is now spotted at the 35 yard line. 823 in the game. Kahuku up ahead 49 to 11. Bronson Tom goes up the middle, gets the first down. Ball spotted it down the 32-yard line. Quick hit for Tom on the right side of the offensive line. Great hole. Follows his blockers. Great read. You see the rest of the Kahuku coming in to make the tackle. Defensive back. Kivaga coming up and making a stop on Tom, but that's what Castle needed to do tonight. Again, Tom goes up the middle. Gets close to the first down. That's Tom, a good Tom, yardage there. Tom just following Lindsey Kinney, offensive lineman there, just making some big holes here at midway of the fourth quarter. As Silva finds a joy there, planning for next year. See here on the replay, Tom again, just a quick trap right up the middle, following his guard and tackle on the right side. Second and one, Tom gets the ball and he gets the first down. Giving the ball to Tom, three consecutive plays, making him the workhorse here in the fourth quarter and he's doing a great job. Reading the hole, finding the cabinet in off the hook as you see one coming off the top of the street at you. Making a stop for the hook, Samoa Silata, the linebacker. The hook with their, I'm sure, with their second or third string in already. The castle still fighting. Join their spirit. It's open. And makes the catch. Number 82, Kawi Umiyamaka. And uh, that's good for a castle score. On with just a little rollout right. Found Umiyamaka in the back of the end zone. He had number 80 short through Rambao open. He went to the end zone and got the touchdown. Great catch. As you see the extra point, they ran a fake out of this formation in the first half and scored. With Valdez flying into the 
Play is no good as flags are thrown before a play ever started. I think uh, either Tohoku jumped off sides, thrown on the right side. Kavraga jumping, trying to make the block. See Silva still coaching. That's what you like to see in the coaching staff. Preparing them for next season, looking at what they can build on, even though down, showing we're still in this game, we're still going to try. And next season, Castle will make the move as they'll enter the white conference next season. The extra point, no good. The score stays 49 to 17 here with 6.35 in the fourth quarter. And you talk about preparation for next season. Castle will be in the white conference next year. So they need to build from here, as you see here on an extra point try. Oh, this is a touchdown on rolling right. This is Rambawa short there, but goes to Miyamaka and finds him right there on the corner. Great concentration on the ball, gets his feet down for a touchdown. Great camera work there. Excellent play there as he was double double covered. You see all the lights there. That's how much points Kahuku got on the scoreboard there. As you count them on a light showing there. You can add them up for Kahuku. And so Castle scores against uh, Kahuku's maybe second or third string uh, defense. Uh, Castle still showing the funny spirit. Kahuku just dominated. Here's the onside kick. Ball is covered by Shane Morasco. And Kahuku will have the ball down at the 47 yard line. Take a look. Side kick bounces off his chest, but it gets back on the ball and covers up. And that's what you teach your players an onside kick just cover the ball. Great job there for Kuhuku. And Preston Taylor stays in the game as a second string quarterback. Ball is given to Eddie Rama this time for a good gain of about four yards. Kahuku just going back to their power game. So sweep right. Let's their offensive line get up in front of the running back and make some key blocks as you see here. This goes right. Some future Kahuku players take over the in fact as Eddie Rock is a six foot two, one hundred eight pound senior, so they're using him as a running back now. This is as a wide receiver. Alfred Franco bulldozes his way close to the first down for the Red Raiders. He'll be just short of the first down. Kahuku going right up the middle. The lead Craig there. Castle, defensive line, 5'11, 165 pound senior. But you see the difference in. Height and weight, the Huku compared to Castle. Oh. Almua gets the ball and the first down on third down and one. And taking more time off the clock, it's now 4.41 in the fourth quarter. The Huku up ahead 49 to 17 over Castle. Amor is getting a handoff from Taylor and just runs over one Castle defender. Showing his strength there, tries to throw off Crab, but Crab holds on with a nice tackle. But Amor showing his talent as well. Rama gets the ball on the outside, gets to about the 20-yard line, and he gets in the end zone for another score for Kahuku. So Eddie Rama scores his first touchdown 
for him in the postseason. Oh, we got a little scuffle there up on the outside. As we see a little skirmish after the touchdown by Eddie Rama. See some fans there wondering what's going on on the field. How's it, brother? Rama, second, uh, probably a third string running back, as he said, a wide receiver, and he goes long for a touchdown. Personal foul at the end of that touchdown play against Kahuku. Number 43, Victor Aoloa. Aola, Aola got in a little scuffle there at the end of the play. Don't know the reason why, but he got flagged for a personal foul and maybe kicked out of the game. After that beautiful run by Eddie Rama. So Rama's touchdown taken back after that 15-yard penalty against Kuhuku. Touchdown taken back, as we see roughly here. It, uh, um, so they did take the touchdown back. That flag was way after he was in the end zone, too. So I don't see how they can take ref. Right now, we're going back and forth on the field. As you see, Mel Patera trying to get this uh, circus in control right now. He's kicked out of the game, as you saw Mel Patera. And so, uh, I guess, offsetting penalties. And now they're going to take the ball back again. They just did that. At least we got a little show here. A little break time. Referee's actually getting some exercise out there. <laughs> yeah, back getting forth. himself on a camera a lot more. <laughs> and after that play there, Kuluku takes their second, in fact, their first time out of the second half. See the Kuluku sideline. And with 4.09 on the clock, the score is 49-11. Kahuku in the lead. Yes, you can! Yes, you can! Yes! We see referee Mel Cortero talking to Pat Silva, the head coach for Castle. As we get things settled here. <laughs> Wondering what is going on. How can we take him back, give him back, take him back, give him back? Finally got it resolved. Get this game going on. Be very interesting about at the ending of the game how these two teams will react to each other. It is a rivalry from way back. Finally met in a playoff after the division split up, and we'll see. In fact, Castle, when the division realignment started, they were in the red conference. Right, they just right. slipped from the white, and finally you see him here now in the blue conference. As Kahuku Dean Castle just went back in their program and showing here tonight. 
Preston Taylor gets about two yards on that first and 36. He's, in a, he's listed as a wide receiver too. So Kahuku using all their staff tonight. Taylor just fakes up the middle, takes a road option, decides to keep it for a couple of, large, couple of yards, like you said. And on second and a big journey, a gain of about a yard by Almua. The third and long, and very long. If they make this first down, they get a free mileage, probably get to go to Kauai or Maui on the next one. Ticket on a first down, they got to go for it. But I've seen it happen with the hooker, one play. They pitch it off to Eddie Rama. Rama gets stopped about the 43-yard line. It'll be fourth down. For the Red Raiders. See Rama on a sweep left, cuts it back across the green. Just great running by Rama. Kahuku loses nothing as Aolona goes to the bench. You bring Rama in, and their personnel is just so great. He gains almost 20 yards on that play. Fourth down, and they go for it. And Rama is shut down for a loss as he's gang tackled by Castle. And it'll be a change of downs as first down and 10 for Castle as they take over the ball at the 48 yard line. With two minutes, 10 seconds to go, Kahuku 49, Castle 17. Castle relied on Han all year long and it showed tonight. If he's shut down, they're not gonna go nowhere. And Kahuku shut them down in the second half of passing, and they're not going anywhere. No momentum at all here in the second half for Castle. Han gets it complete to Pagoyo, and that's a 10-yard ten, ten pass. Another first down for Castle with 140 to play in the fourth quarter. See here, Han looking left, just another quick slant to Pagoyo, and it worked all in the first half, and they got away from him in the second half. Where was he in the second half? They opened it up with a long pass right at the beginning of the third quarter. He dropped an, another pass, and then Pagoyo is just out of this, the game plan. And he kept them in the game in the first half, him and Han. On the play there, Kohuku is probably going to be called for an offsides penalty. So say like TJ Mugley jumped offsides for Kohuku. You see here, just anxious to get a hit on a quarterback, just jumps out, jumps over the line from his outside linebacker position on the left side. Kohuku can't afford that with the score 49 to 17. First and five for Castle as Han lets loose Pagoyo, the intended receiver. You know, with that tandem there, Pagoyo and catching passes from Han, they both return next year. And it, it, they're going to be a great, they're going to be a force next year. All correct. Both of them juniors. They should be a more mature team next year. That's going to be a great quarterback receiving combination there. As Castle shows that they have great receivers there, as you, as you say, Dominic, in that play. Making the catch, Bay Rombawa. And good for another first down as Castle still driving the ball and driving it well. On just a little roll right, finds Rambao out in the flats on the right side for gain for a first down. You see the flight, the ball coming right at you. Rambao following the ball in great concentration there. And he's a junior. He comes back. So Han got a great receiving core out there right now. 
and they should be good as a good team as they'll be in the white conference next year. 51 seconds. Now in the fourth quarter, Kohuku up ahead by 49 to 17 on Castle. Marvin Tolope making that stop. He's a six foot 230 pound junior. He's coming back, playing middle guard right on the ball for Kahuku. So Kahuku got some great big guys coming back as well. Both teams can look forward to next year. Han lobs it over and it's wow. caught by Chris Pogoyo. What a play there and it's good for a touchdown. Pogoyo, post pattern, Han just floated up there. Pogoyo just ran under it and made the catch as the defensive safety for Kahuku got turned around the wrong way and Pogoyo made a great catch. Not giving up, showing their talent. And Castle going for one. Kia Schultz, the kicker, will try the extra point. And it's good as the score now increases. You get Kahuku 49, Castle 24, and we see Schultz early in the first quarter with that 43-yard field goal. Maybe, um, a, maybe a Division One prospect with that kind of leg. See here on a touchdown, flight of the ball here again. Pogoya just concentration, just cuts in front of the defensive back there for Kahuku Gonzalez, and he makes a great catch. He's going to be a Division One prospect as well six foot two 200 pound puts on some weight in the off season going into his senior year you know if we had fantasy football here that'd be a great tandem to pull Han and Pagoya probably see a lot more of them next year and see them in, a, in, in the standings and the stats 15 seconds left in the first in the fourth quarter 49 24 to score Next week, Kahuku will face the winner of Farrington and Kailua in the semifinals. And Kahuku really put a spanking on Farrington during the regular season as well, as well as beating Kailua during the regular season. So going back to the kicker, as you said, Division One prospect probably you're right, before the game, pre-game warm-ups, I was watching him, and he was really booting him. And that 43-yard kick he did earlier, you could really hear the leg behind it as he connected with the ball, as we told each other up here in the press box. We could really hear that leg power behind him. And so Castle can look forward to next year and, and build from this game, even though they're losing 49-24. to They did do some great stuff in the first half as well as the second half. Just Kahuku is just overpowering all around game is there offensively and defensively and Castle just got to build for next year. Kahuku will have the ball. Should be the last play of the game. At the 48 yard line. Taylor gets the ball off and he gets it to Alfred Franco their other running back who will also be next, here next year a junior in his own right and you take a look at the crowd all across Aloha Stadium Castle side of the sideline giving their last congratulations as their team will end their season tonight as Kahuku will carry on from here showing the powerhouse things here tonight uh, wrapping it up castle uh becoming the runner-up in the blue conference it's a good showing here after a six-year absence but kuhuku sure a tough team they'll advance to next week's semi-finals and that should be a good matchup there kuhuku showing their strength they were picked to win the game they were picked to go to the divisional finals and they're carrying on with their strong offense as well as defense, running game, offensive line, defense. And Castle just was out man tonight, playing both ways. Second half was just too much for Castle. There you see the final score.
Kohuku wins this one and advances to next week. The final score, 49-24. And as we leave you now for Blaine Cowie, Bill Lewis, and for my partner, Gerald Cullen, I'm Dominic Radira. The final score, Kohuku wins 49-24 over the Castle Knights. Good night from Aloha Stadium. Good night.